Today, we're gonna to talk about finding the perfect stem for you. But before we do that, let's have a quick public service announcement. We're just gonna preface this discussion about stems and remind you that getting a professional bike fit done will save you a lot of guesswork, trial and error, money, and indeed time. So go and get one done. At the very least, you'll be armed with the knowledge about what dimensions your body needs your bike to be. There are a lot of options for in-person appointments, or you can use apps like Size My Bike to give you a better than ballpark answer to the questions about stems. Okay, let's get down to some business with some stem Q and A. This is the stem, and it connects the frame of your bike to the handlebar. The length of your frame is fixed, there's not much you can do about that short of buying another one. Similarly, you can't do much about your torso length and your arm length. These are fixed measurements. The stem is one of the go-to components to help you match your body dimensions to the bike. As well as getting your fit right, stems go a long way in dictating the handling and ride feel of your bike. As a broad rule of thumb, longer stems slow the handling, which is ideal for faster rides. Shorter stems speed it up, making the bike more agile and that's why they're so popular with mountain bikers with all the twists and turns they have to make. Stems range from 30 millimeters for really tech mountain bikes to 150 millimeters in length for, for road bikes. Selecting a stem at the extremes of either long or short can cause some weird things to happen to a bike's handling. If the frame isn't specifically designed for a very long or short stem, we're looking for a happy zone between the two. For road bikes, that happy zone for most riders is usually found somewhere between 90 millimeters and 120 millimeters in length. What do we mean by rise when we're talking about stems? Rise is the angle that the stem's extension tube, this bit here, leaves the stirrer clamp. In short, it affects the height of the handlebar. Most road bikes are sold with a stem with a slight negative rise because the head tube isn't vertical and that makes the stem effectively flat on the bike. And that's about as much about aesthetics as it is about fit. The rise is important because of the options of angle range from the benign, like this, to the extreme. Stems can often be used either way up and rise angles can range all the way from zero up to 15 degrees or more. And that can make the stem stick positively up or positively down and that can have a major effect on the amount of weight that you can apply to the handlebar. With a positive upwards rise, you're placing less weight through your hands. With a negative downward rise, or drop as it now is, you add more weight to the bar through your hands. Rise affects the effective length of the stem too. The greater the rise angle, the shorter the reach of the stem. So if you place two 100 millimeter stems side by side, one with a zero rise and the other with an eight degree rise, you'd see that the stem with the eight degree rise will have its bar clamp around five millimeters closer to the steerer. Now stems with a more aggressive rise or drop can be used to address the requirements of riders with very specific fit needs. For example, riders with flexible lower backs and desired desire for an aero position, or more often less flexible riders who want a pro look for their bikes, will choose a negative rise stem to achieve their performance or fashion goals. On the flip side, riders will use a positive angle rise to place their bar clamp in a raised position, which can be used to adjust the hip angle and balance the amount of pressure between your feet, backside and hands. When you ride a road bike, you're looking to create a riding position where you can ride on the brake hoods or in a position where the biceps and triceps are working evenly to support your shoulders and upper body. The general consensus is that a torso to body angle of between 75 and 90 degrees to an open elbow angle of around 120 degrees will deliver optimum power, control and comfort for most people. It's like this. As a rule of thumb, if you're riding seated with your hands on the tops of the bar, with your hands relatively close to the stem, you should be able to tuck your elbows in front of your torso without the pointy bits of your elbows touching your jersey front. If they do touch, you're probably a bit close to the bar and might need to add some stem length. If there's a big gap, you're most likely too stretched out. Now a stem that's too short can cause your upper body to be cramped and this can lead to lots of problems, some discomfort, 
reduction in control, and also a reduction in the power that you can apply to the bike. You're all cramped up, it just doesn't work very well. Like we said before, shorter stems increase the steering sensitivity and generally increase the feeling of agility. But take that to an extreme and it can make the bike feel skittish and, and a little bit nervous. That said, a stem that's too long can be just as bad for your riding. Too long of a stem will cause your seated riding position to be pulled forward, which has implications for rider comfort. That's saddle sore, genital numbness to you. And like a stem that's too short, it can also affect your ability to generate power. It can also interfere with operating the brakes and the gears safely if you're like crazy stretched. And if you're having to reach too much for the levers, it's just really bad for your hands. A long stem will slow the steering down, especially as speed increases, which can be a good thing. But at slow speeds, it can make the steering feel imprecise and sometimes a little floppy. An overlong stem will also add undue weight onto your hands and make your arms work unnecessarily hard. You're just all out like this. Lastly, riding a low stretched out position may be aero and look pro, but it's usually uncomfortable and not sustainable by mere mortals like you and I. These World Tour riders spend years getting flexible enough to sustain that position over a long Tour de France stage. Chances are you'll be begging for mercy after a couple of hours. If you're already using a 150 millimeter long stem on your road bike and need more length, then your frame is too small for you. In fact, it's way too small. So do yourself a massive favor and upsize one, possibly even two frame sizes. Better still, go and get a proper bike fit to dial this info in with some actual empirical accuracy. Once you've absorbed this financial and emotional pain, you'll be glad you did because the physical pain will vanish. We get asked this over and over again. There is no right or wrong answer, and it is a personal fit issue. Here's the Road CC viewpoint. Yes, it looks cool. No, it's not the most comfortable or power efficient way to fit a stem. Yes, it helps you get aero. No, you don't need to be that aero. Yes, some famous pros do do it. No, a lot of pros now actually do run two and a half millimeters of spacers or even more under the stem. And that should be your starting point. If you're looking to buy a new bike, then give yourself a couple of months to play around with the stem height before you get that hacksaw out. Right. This style of adjustable stem is quite common on city bikes and utility bikes. You can easily use the Allen key to adjust to a positive uprise through to a relatively neutral zero degree or even into a negative uh, rise. Now, while you may not obviously choose to use this stem as your final choice, although you could, these type of stems can be especially useful for making the decision as to whether you want a negative rise, a neutral rise, or a positive rise in the stem that you actually choose to buy. There are many types of stem. Let's start with materials. Alloy, like this one, are the mainstay of the breed, though carbon and titanium options are out there. Nearly everyone making alloy stems cold forges them. This is a strong, reliable way to make alloy stems. The main job of a stem is to resist twisting forces, and there aren't many things better at that than a metal tube. Titanium stems are metal tubes too, but they're usually welded. Look for neat fish scale stipple welds around the clamps. The neater, the better with titanium and no discoloration in the world. Carbon stems fall into two categories, cheap and selling a kidney expensive. The cheap ones are usually a carbon wrap over an alloy skeleton. Honestly, don't bother, just buy a really nice aluminium stem. The expensive ones are lighter and more complicated because they're just carbon. You can spend a lot of money on one of those if you want. And yes, it will help reduce the weight of your bike and your bank balance. But spending on a mega lightweight stem won't really affect the performance of your bike noticeably. There are so many really good, strong, light, cheap options out there that you have to be a full scale weight weenie or brand whore to spend more than hundred pounds on a stem. Most stems at 30 to 60 pounds are functionally as good as those costing double that or more. Beyond the materials, the most stems are broadly the same. Stems have two clamps. There's the steerer clamp with two five millimeter or four millimeter bolts uh, clamping the steerer tube. And there's usually a pair of bolts doing that. Um, the bar clamp up here will normally have a removable face plate. And sometimes these will be hinged, though most often like this one, 
they will use uh, Allen bolts at each of the corners. Normally they're four millimeter in size, uh, which is the preferred size of the industry. Uh, bolts will usually be steel, posh, spendy ones might be titanium. Always worth a look at, some bolts will be good quality, others will unfortunately be monkey metal, especially on the cheaper ones. Uh, be prepared to change those up. Always use diligence, a torque wrench and Allen bits, good quality Allen bits and keys to avoid shredding the monkey metal ones. Well, usually if you change one thing, other things have to make adaptions. You shouldn't have to change anything. However, if you've been using a radically short or long stem and you've had a bike fit and a rethink about your stem length, you might find that your saddle position might also need a tweak. And this can have a knock-on implication uh, for your seat post, depending upon its design. Firstly, don't worry about what your stem looks like. Just concentrate on getting the right one in terms of the length and the rise. Check your local bike shop for stems that have been removed from new bikes. There's often a good selection in the odds and sods bin that can be yours cheaply. Do remember to ask, they're not always on display. Otherwise, check online for good deals on closeout stems. You can quite often find the size you think you might want reduced online. And it's worth buying either side of your assumed perfect length too, just to make doubly sure. And you'd be amazed the difference that five or 10 millimeters can make to cockpit comfort and handling. And once you've gone through this process, remember it might take a few goes to get it spot on, you should be in possession of a stack of cheap stems, one of which will be the right one for you. So make sure you make a note of the length and the rise once you've got it zeroed in. The other stems then can be kept as options for other bikes or bad back times or given or sold to other riders in similar predicament. Once you find your perfect rise and length, you can then splash the cash on a really nice looking one to complement your bike. Thanks for tuning into this video from Road CC. Please like and subscribe, tell your friends to do the same, and that way we can let you know when we've new content uploaded just for you.